Hello everyone, my name is Mark, and in today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create a custom footer in Divi using the Theme Builder. Before we dive into the step-by-step -step process, let's take a quick look at what we'll be creating. This is the footer we are going to build. At the top, we have a dynamic call to action section. Below that, on the left side, you'll find my logo alongside some contact information. In the center, we have a set of important links, and on the right, an email opt-in form. At the very bottom, there's a section dedicated to the copyright text, with social media icons on the right. And as you can see, the footer is fully responsive, adjusting beautifully when viewed on mobile devices. Now, let's get started. Start by navigating to the WordPress dashboard, then go to Divi and select the Theme Builder. Next, click on Add Global Footer, and then choose Build Global Footer. You should see an empty section by default. If not, simply add a new section. Open this section. Scroll down to the background settings and choose a background color. Now, head over to the Design tab. Under Spacing, set the top padding to 75 pixels and the bottom padding to 0 pixels. Next, add a new row to this section and choose the 2 -third, 1 -third layout. Open the row settings and in the background options, set the background color to white. Then, adjust the transparency slider to 0.1. Move to the Design tab. Under Sizing, set the maximum width to 1400 pixels. In the Spacing section, set the top and bottom padding to 50 pixels, and do the same for the left and right padding. Switch to the Tablet view and adjust the top and bottom padding to 30 pixels, as well as the left and right padding to 30 pixels. Under Border, Set the corner radius to 12 pixels for a rounded look. Then, go to the Advanced tab. Under Visibility, set the horizontal and vertical overflow to visible. Place a text module in the first column. In the text field, add your H2 title. Next, go to the Design tab. Under Heading Text, select H2. Set the color to white and set the font size to 36 pixels. And then switch to the Mobile view to adjust the font size to 28 pixels. In the Spacing section, set the bottom margin to 5 pixels. Now, add another text module. In the text field, enter your desired text, then go to the Design tab. Under Text, set the color to white and adjust the transparency slider to 0.6. For text size, switch to the Mobile tab and set the font size to 13 pixels. Add a button module to the second column. In the button text field, enter Get Started Today. And under Link, place your URL. Next, go to the Design tab. Under Alignment, select Right. Then, switch to the tablet view and set the alignment to Left. In the Button tab, enable Use Custom Styles for Button. Set the font size to 18 pixels, and for the tablet view, adjust it to 14 pixels. Set the button text color to white and the background color to blue. 
In the Hover tab, choose a slightly darker blue. Set the border width to 0 pixels and the border radius to 5 pixels. Adjust the button letter spacing to 1 pixel. Set the font weight to semi-bold. Set the font style to uppercase and disable the show button icon option. In the spacing section, set the top margin to 5 pixels and the bottom margin to 0 pixels. Set the top and bottom padding to 15 pixels and the left and right padding to 25 pixels. Finally, under box shadow, choose the second option. Set the vertical position to 0 pixels, the blur strength to 25 pixels, and the spread strength to 4 pixels. Adjust the shadow color to white, and reduce the transparency to 0.2 using the slider. Next, add an image module directly beneath the button. Upload your chosen image in the image field. I'm using a free stock image, and I've included the link in the description below. For this tutorial, I've removed the background from the image and resized it to 125 by 113 pixels. Go to the Design tab, and under Alignment, choose Right. Next, head over to the Advanced tab. Set the position to Absolute, and choose the top right location. For the vertical offset, set it to minus 95 pixels. Then, switch to the tablet view and adjust it to minus 233 pixels. And, for the mobile view, set it to minus 254 pixels. Finally, for the horizontal offset, adjust it to minus 135 pixels. Next, add a special section and choose the 1 4th, 2 4th, 1 4th layout. Open this section, scroll down to the background settings, and choose a background color. Move to the Design tab. Under Sizing, set the inner maximum width to 1400 pixels. In the Spacing section, set the top and bottom padding to 50 pixels. Add an image module in the first column and upload your logo into the image field. Next, add a blurb module beneath the logo. In the text field, enter your description. Under the image section, enable, use icon, and select an icon of your choice. Now, head to the Design tab. Under Image and Icon, set your icon color and place it on the left. Adjust the image width to 22 pixels. Set the top margin to 2 pixels and the left margin to 10 pixels. You may need to tweak these values depending on the icon you choose, as different icons vary in size, so adjust them until everything aligns perfectly. For the body text, set the color to white and reduce the transparency to 0.6 using the slider. Adjust the body text size to 13 pixels and set the line height to 1.6 EMM. Undersizing, set the content width to 1100 pixels. In the spacing section, set the bottom margin to 25 pixels. In the animation settings, turn off the icon animation by selecting No Animation.
Once you've configured the blurb, duplicate it twice and update the descriptions as needed. For the blurb that contains the phone number, increase the font size to 18 pixels and set the font weight to semi-bold. Add a row in the middle column and choose the one-third column structure. In the first column, place a text module and enter your H3 title in the body field. Next, go to the Design tab. Under Heading Text, select H3, set the font color to white, and adjust the font size to 18 pixels. In the Spacing section, set the bottom margin to 10 pixels. Now, add another text module directly beneath it. In the Body field, insert your links. Then, go back to the Design tab. Under Text, set the font size to 13 pixels and adjust the line height to 2.3 EM. Switch to the Link tab, set the link color to white, and reduce the transparency to 0.6 using the slider. Then, in the Hover tab, set the link color to solid white without any transparency. Afterward, open the row settings and remove the second and third columns. Then, duplicate the first column twice. Finally, update the titles and text links in each of the duplicated columns. Place an email opt-in module in the last column. Enter your title in the title field and add your footer description. Under the Email Account Settings, select your service provider, such as MailChimp or ConvertKit. I personally use ConvertKit, so I enter my API and API secret key here. The required information may vary depending on your email provider. For the success action, I recommend selecting Redirect to a custom URL and creating a dedicated thank you page for your subscribers. You can then place the URL here. However, for now, I'll keep it set to display a message. In the background options, set the background color to white and adjust the transparency slider to 0.1. Next, go to the Design tab. Under Layout, choose Body on Top, Form on Bottom. In the Fields section, set the field text color to black. and adjust the top and bottom padding to 10 pixels. Set the field text size to 13 pixels. For the title text, set the font size to 22 pixels. Under body text, align the text to the center and set the color to white. Adjust the transparency slider to 0.6 and set the font size to 13 pixels and the line height to 1.5 EM. In the Button tab, enable Use Custom Styles for Button. Set the font size to 14 pixels. Set the button text color to white and the background color to blue. In the Hover tab, choose a slightly darker blue. Set the border width to 0 pixels. Adjust the font weight to semi-bold. Set the font style to uppercase. And disable the Show Button icon option. Finally, in the Border tab, set the rounded corners to 5 pixels. Add another section beneath the Special section.
open the section settings, scroll down to the background settings, and set your background color. Next, go to the Design tab. Under Spacing, set the top and bottom padding to 0 pixels. Add a new row to this section, choosing the one half column layout. Open the row settings and navigate to the Design tab. Under Sizing, set the maximum width to 1400 pixels. In the Spacing section, set the top padding to 10 pixels and the bottom padding to 3 pixels. Switch to the Tablet view and adjust both the top and bottom padding to 10 pixels. Repeat the same adjustments for the mobile view. Under Border Settings, go to the Top Border tab. Set the border width to 1 pixel, choose white as the color, and reduce the transparency to 0.2 using the slider. Now, return to the Content tab and open the settings for the first column. Then, go to the Advanced tab. Under Custom CSS, switch to the Module Elements tab. In the Main Element field, enter Margin Bottom, 15px. This will help reduce the column space for tablet and mobile views. Add a text module in the first column and enter your text in the body field. Next, go to the Design tab. Under Text Settings, set the color to white and reduce the transparency to 0.6 using the slider. Adjust the text size to 13 pixels. Set the text alignment to center for both tablet and mobile views. In the spacing section, set the top margin to 5 pixels. Now, add a social media module in the last column. In the content tab, you can add your social media networks. Open each social media network setting and set the background color to white, reducing the transparency to 0.6 using the slider. Return to the main social media module settings and switch to the Design tab. Under the Alignment tab, set the alignment to the right. Then, switch to the Tablet view and set the alignment to Center. Repeat the same for the Mobile view. Under the Icon tab, enable Use Custom Icon Size and set the icon size to 14 pixels. In the Spacing section, set the top margin to 3 pixels. For Tablet view, adjust it to 5 pixels Finally, go to the Advanced tab. Under Custom CSS, switch to the Module Elements tab. In the Social Follow field, enter Margin Bottom, 0px. This will remove any extra bottom space for the icons. And that's it for this tutorial. I hope this was helpful to you. If you enjoyed this video or learned something new, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel for more tutorials. If you have any questions or need further assistance, feel free to drop a comment below. I'll be happy to help. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.